The newest One Piece anime opening is out, and if you've seen it, you'll know that it is one of the most beautiful, stunning openings the series has ever had. Directed by the legendary director Megumi Shitani, with the legendary animator Masami Mori, also known as Sodi, as you can expect from them, this opening is filled to the brim with so many little details, easter eggs and references that you will likely haven't even noticed due to just how many of them there are and how hidden they are, so allow me to take this special occasion to show you all the incredible insane details hidden in this beautiful new opening. The opening begins on a zooming of the sunny of Luffy laying down on the deck. This is in reference to chapter 1060, Luffy's dream, as all the other straw hats also parallel their positions, and caribou can even be seen inside his barrel. Chapter 1060 serves as the first chapter entering into the egghead arc, making it a fitting point to open the opening in the anime too. Luffy, however, is wearing two bandages in this shot of the opening, which he isn't wearing in the respective version of chapter 1060. It's possible this may actually be a reference to the identical bandages that Luffy had as a kid when he declared that same dream to Ace and Sabo, to serve as a parallel between that moment and the present. The song lyrics also reference this, as they mention Yume no Hate, or what lies at the end of the dream. By the way, focusing on the song, Hiroshi Kitarani also sings the title of the song, Us, which is obviously from us as in ourselves, we as a group, so instead of we are, it's us. The singer has also explained, however, that us could be read as the Japanese reading for the word earth, which is pronounced as us in Japanese, explaining the line all of us being like all of earth. And he also mentioned that it could reference the word ashita, which means tomorrow or a new morning, a new dawn. As the Straw Hats walk forward, we can see Sanji and Jinbei comparing their Aloha shirts, while Sanji then turns around to fawn over Nami. The lettering from this shot could also have been potentially inspired by the color spread of chapter 911, given the similar effect. We then see the Vega Force 1 carrying the Thousand Sunny, like in chapter 1061, but you can also spot the Sea Beasts under the layer of water, as they are ready to strike when Lilith gives the order in the following scene. Then we cut to chapter 1062, where Luffy, Chopper, Jinbei and Bonnie are exploring Egghead and eating from the automated cooking machine. Bonnie is actually visible in the shot but she shadowed heavily as to not spoil animal watchers. The shadow is cast by a large figure, which may actually be that of Atlas who was towering over them in that scene. Then we have a shot from chapter 1064, with the Straw Hats exploring the Lab of Faces Sky Island ground, and then Luffy discovering the Iron Giant in chapter 1065, and subsequently chapter 1066 and 1067. Notice how all of these scenes are in chronological order as the arc proceeds forward. When Luffy looks back towards the Iron Giant, you can actually spot Dr. Vegapunk Stella in the distance, standing above it on his shoulder, as this is with the scene where Luffy and Vegapunk first meet in 1066. We quickly zoom in atop Vegapunk's head, where we see each of the different punks rotating around as if this were a character select screen in a fighting video game, all still above Stella's apple serving as the base for them. The shot of Lilith bickering with Shaka is clearly taken from chapter 1071 as well. Then, after Stella pops out, we faintly see the Cypher Pole Zero agents in the background, but their faces are quickly covered up by their masks. However, this transitions into being a screen Luffy and Chopper are all looking into as they explore the laboratory. Luffy's dumb shoes malfunction just like in the manga, however, which sent him flying. Luffy popping out on the bottom left of the screen could also be a reference to the infamous photobomb that has found itself as a running joke among several anime openings in the industry. However, Luffy stretches his arms back to send himself flying out of the frame, leaping all the way around to the couch next to Zoro, as the footage is shown to be from a security camera, the same that Shaka used to keep track of everyone during the Labo Phase death game. The panel of Zoro and Luffy seen together, of course, is taken straight from the manga in chapter 1074. You can also notice that Luffy is still wearing his outfit under the egghead vest, which may explain why he still had his pants when transformed as Nika. As a neat detail, by the way, the font used for the credits across the opening is no generic font, but actually the font that Oda specifically used for the title cards of the Vegapunks during the Egghead arc, only in this case the ones being introduced is the people who worked on the episode, which is a really nice touch. The security camera behind them then turns into a hologram showcasing all the Vegapunks. As a neat detail, York is cheekily smirking at the camera. However, they are then replaced by the Marines, featuring Kizaru, Vice Admiral Dahl, Hibari, Helmeppo, and Garp. 
ramen noodles are hanging out of Kizaru's face as a reference to chapter 1089 where Kizaru was seen eating ramen as it is his favorite food. Then we switch to Cross Guild with Crocodile, Mihawk and Buggy popping out, with the former two stretching out their hook and sword around Buggy to threaten him. However, as they do, Luffy stretches his arm at the top of the screen, grabbing the monitor and jumping in from the other side as he transforms into Nika and breaks the fourth wall by literally shattering through the screen and the hologram. Luffy then pops out the goggles from chapter 1070 and puts them on his eyes, just like he did in his fight against Luchi. Luffy then also starts spinning around just like he did in that fight too, and as a giant then transitions into a Valo Pizarro as a giant trying to squash Kobe and Hibari escaping from Hachinosu. The hand then transitions again into Bonnie's, who is transforming Luffy, Chopper and Jinbei into their aged versions, as shown by the crystals falling around which appear when she uses her powers. You can also spot the padlock that was covering the paw room with Kuma's memories that Bonnie destroyed with her powers, but even more hidden, you can actually spot several visual elements transitioning behind Bonnie. The first is Kuma's symbol from his Bible, which is also seen on his clothes, then it's his paw symbol followed by the silhouette of the sun god Nika, the superhero Kuma idolizes. Then we have the celestial dragon Mark, the hoof of the sky flying dragon, and the target Kuma had on his back during the God Valley incident. And finally, most obscure, we have some sapphires alongside the silhouette of Saint Jaeger Thea Saturn, transformed as an Ushioni, as also reference to his sapphire scales. The hand then transitions again into someone giving Atlas a high five, though their arm appears to slightly glitch out of existence. This is actually the hologram that Atlas summoned and high fived in chapter 1062 to help illustrate how holograms work to Luffy and the others, but seen from the hologram's point of view. We then switch to the hard pirates Shachi, Penguin and Beppo, who have been feminized by Doc Q. The submarine is flooding as a reference likely to the submarine breaking down and collapsing when Blackbeard defeated them. We then transition into the marines at Hachinosu, including Prince Cruz, Hibari, Kujaku and Helmeppo, standing together to save Kobe, with the parts in the background transitioning into being fascinated by the GP flowers that Hibari shot, just like in the manga. This seamlessly transitions again into Sentomaru, with the Mark III pacifistas behind him, who are all shooting lasers towards Kizaru when he jumped towards the island to attack. The scene, however, then flips around to show us Sentomaru's point of view as we see Kizaru with the laser beams perfectly transitioning into Kizaru's light glints, with Kizaru falling from the sky towards beneath the clouds below into the sea, perhaps after being tossed by Luffy into the sea in chapter 1093. His movement is matched by Kuma, who breaks free of his medical support at Kamabaka in chapter 1067 to run away towards Bonnie. The rotational movement then carries into the S Shark, who collapses into the ground after being hit by Usopp's attack in chapter 1065. He however falls seamlessly into the ground thanks to its Sui Sui Nomi powers it got from Senor Pink and its eyes glow, likely in reference to it backstabbing the other punks later on. The ground, however, becomes a layer of water as Bonnie pops out of the sea. It then moves to a kid Sentomaru being fascinated by a light, in this case being Borsalino showcasing his powers to a young Sentomaru just like we saw in the flashback. The light blast shoots through, but then cuts through the Vega Force, crashing into the Frontier Dome, representing when Kizaru sent Luffy flying into the Frontier Dome before Luffy fell down and transformed into Gear 5. We then see Shaka turning around in a chamber filled with people pressing their hands against the glass. This is the room of the Cypherpol agents, as indicated by their hats, who are captured by York, as Shaka realizes that York is about to shoot him. Similarly, we see York petting a snake, just like she did in Chapter 1075, though this is more precisely likely to be the scene from Chapter 1079, where she is giving them orders to kill all the punks. From this scene, a snake's eyes shaped like stars, transition into a star jewel representing the jewels from Bunny's powers taking away Vegapunk's years. Then we see Luffy transitioning into his different outfits across the arcs, going from Egghead to Onigashima, to Wano, to the Tea Party, to Whole Cake, Dres Rosa, Gladiator Lucy, 
Panhazard, Fishman Island, Marineford, Impel Down, Amazon Lily, Sabaody, Thriller Bark, Ennius Lobby, Afro Luffy, Skypea, Post Alabasta, Alabasta, Drum Island, even with the missing sleeve from the cannonball on the flag, and all the way back to his East Blue design. Then, as the Straw Hats walk forward, they each change into different outfits, though this is matched by the floor that they step on, with each floor representing a different arc and thus a different outfit. This includes the tiled floor from Lockdown to represent East Blue, and Islabi's tiled floor at the Tower of Justice, Thriller Bark's Ground, Sabaudi Archipelago, Marineford, Fishman Island, Punk Hazard, and Dress Rosa. As a neat detail, Luffy is alone in Marineford, but at Fishman Island his crewmates begin to reappear again. Then they change into Hulkic Island outfits, Wano outfits, Onigashima outfits, post Wano outfits, and finally Egghead outfits as they leap into the city. As we zoom into Luffy, however, he switches into Nika as he leaps towards an awakened Luchi. As we zoom into the gear between them, though, this transitions into the gear in Kid's damned punk attack, as he prepares to fire on Shanks, showing us the battle royale from this year between Kid and Shanks, Law and Blackbeard, Garp and Kuzan, Zoran and Ashawk, and Luffy and Luchi. Ashok may seem a bit big in this panel, but keep in mind that the Seraphim are way bigger than normal humans. As their hacky fists clash and heat up, they then transition into Saba's fire, who attacks Emu, and among that fire we can quickly spot the Emu devil tail-like arrow that attacks Sabo. Sabo then emerges from his flames as Karasu's crows take to the skies of Marijua. This then transitions into the new school, flying over Alabasta to deliver the news of Cobra's death and Vivi's absence. Morgans, however, clearly hides both Wapple and especially Vivi to not let anyone know that he's keeping them alive, telling you to keep shush with his mouth. The falling newspaper then transition into the books of Ahara being tossed into the lake. And as another neat detail, the aspect ratio turns black, which is a neat callback to how in the manga the pages turn black when we go into a flashback, as this indicates that the portion of this opening focuses on all the flashbacks of this arc. From the books, we switch to two men attending a funeral with flowers, which happen to be Vegapunk and Dragon attending the Ohara funeral in chapter 1066. We then cut to another flashback as we see the swords pledge upon the empty throne. However, each sword is surrounded by one of Emu's butterflies, as you can actually briefly spot Emu sitting upon the throne. Sabo turns towards Emu while bleeding as he changes into Kid, then Law, and then Kobe, showcasing all those who have struggled. Kobe then similarly continues and changes into Vivi, who is escaping from Marijoa through the wall crack that Wapo left behind, which then transitions into Bonnie, extending her arms towards Kuma's memories to take them all in, sending us into Kuma's flashback. Then, as we zoom out onto the map of Egghead, we zoom towards left tail into the horizon, and then that sun changes into Luffy's sun-shaped hat as he falls towards the ground to declare his dream again, making the entire opening come full circle.